This is the day that we first saw Fair Isle. We had looked at lots of boats, but from first glance, this was the boat for us. We gave her a good checking over, spent the day rummaging around. Judy checked out the sunbathing space on deck, a must have, our girls had said, if they were gonna to come to visit. This is why Hans Christians are at the top of my list. Ultra strong, full keel, encapsulated lead with a keel hung rudder, super strong. This is one of the few moving pictures we hadn't planned on documenting this in film. The jet wash showed the bottom to be in good condition, but the anodes needed changing as zincs in fresh water get a white coating and stop working. So I changed them and then spent a week doing the anti-fouling. I know it's not the best bargaining tool to make a deal on buying a boat, but we were always going to buy this boat and the dealers knew it. Actually in Holland they're a very laid back bunch and great to deal with. I have to say we didn't get the same impression of boat dealers in England. There must be some good ones, but the ones that we had were more like second-hand car dealers. Back to Monacan Dam, we had to get to grips with the work. With the water levels down, we were on the bottom by November, and there for the winter. There's lots to do, don't be forward, even the most sorted boat will require work. Nothing on boats is easy. We did manage some sailing around the Markhamir in spring, as the water returned to its summer level. So with the water level back up, it was time to go. Saying goodbye to some of our favourite places like Horn, Enkusen and Medenblick was hard, but we were excited to be on our first proper passage in Fair Isle. First though we had to negotiate the very large and very crowded lock. Out into the salt water and only the swing bridge to negotiate before we could get out to sea. Conditions were perfect, easterlies and a gentle sea state made for a comfortable evening. It's a busy place with many shipping lanes and gas and oil rigs for good measure. With the wind increasing I put a reef in the main for the night and the fishing line out. Someone told me it's the best time to catch fish. As the sun went down, the girls thought we had something for dinner. There you do. I'll just stand Oh, it's huge! It is huge. It's a bloody surprise. What is that plastic thing on top there? sea bass. This is like tea. But it looks like my fishing lures are better at fooling humans than fish. Plastic. Yes, okay, Steve. perfect morning conditions, we had a fast approach to the English coast and decided to head for Ipswich to see some friends. This means getting into the Orwell River between the industrial docks at Harwich and Felixstowe. After a weekend in the river, we had to head south through the maze of sandbanks. It's quite difficult to negotiate this pass of eastern England. We spent the night at Chatham Marina, right next to the famous dockyard where Lord Nelson learned to sail and HMS Victory was built. Round the corner of Kent, and in flat calm, we decided to anchor just off the marina at Ramsgate for the night. From there, you transit past the very busy port of Dover, remembering to call them up well in advance on the VHF to announce your intentions. OK, I forgot, and they called me, but they were very nice and good to know that they're monitoring what's going on outside the harbour walls. We had the tide with us, so a fast trip into our new home marina, Eastbourne. 